Um, hopefully you have finished making your vessel from clay or whatever material you chose. Um, and the next step when it's done, let it sit for just a little bit until you can't squeeze your form and change it anymore because now it's time to add details. And while we're holding and pinching and adding those details, we don't want to smush our little form. So again, we're making anamorphic or animal shaped vessels or containers inspired by Maud Welch and her snake effigy jar. And I'm sure while you were working, you were thinking about the animals you liked and how to represent them using just some small, simple details, like the cat with the pointy ears and the little triangle nose. Um, so now we're going to talk about some ways that we can make and add those details. I have another ball of clay and maybe you want to make something like an elephant's trunk or a cat's tail. But again, if you're going to make a cat's tail, don't be foolish like me and try to make a straight up tail that your um, cats or little siblings could easily knock off. I think it's probably better, would have been a better choice to make the tail curve around the side of my cat dish. But live and learn, we all make mistakes, right? So if you want to make a coil, to make a trunk or a tail or something like that, you can start by rolling your smoothed out ball between your hands. And when it gets to where you can't smooth it, you can start pinching and rolling it on the table. And I kind of stretch my fingers apart as I roll, stretch it apart. I once heard someone say it's kind of like making pasta, like gnocchi or something, but I don't make a lot of gnocchi, so I don't know. But you're just kind of pulling and stretching and pulling and stretching and pulling and stretching to make the coil. It might take some time and that's okay. That's one way to make details. That might already be an elephant's trunk. I don't know, it's kind of a fat trunk, but it would maybe work or a bushy tail on the back, maybe a raccoon's tail or something. But here's the thing, if I wanted to add this fat little tail on the back of my vessel, if I just stuck it on like this, it is definitely going to fall off when we fire it, which is why we do what's called slip and score or scratch and attach. Do you remember when we were talking about slip, that kind of muddy, mucky clay glue? Well, that's what happens when you mix water and clay. So to slip and score or scratch and attach, you're going to scratch the surface of what you want to attach and also scratch the surface of what you want it to attach to. Get a little bit of water, let it get in those cracks of both pieces, and then you'll apply it and kind of smush it and work it to your clay. Now, I don't really want my vessel to have a big tail. So is this it over? Do I have to throw it away and start over? Make my hands tired with another pinch pot? I don't. It's not really stuck, so I can pull it off. And my clay is not fire, so I can just use my finger and smooth all those score marks away. So it's possible to change your mind while you're working. Don't worry. You might get started and change your mind, get started and change your mind. I have a different animal in mind, and I want to see if you can guess it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little triangle. I'm going to get a piece of clay. Oh, my hair's stuck. And I'm going to start to smush it into a pancake, smoothing out those cracks. Smush, 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 and smooth. Smush and smooth. So that's a cute little triangle. And you are probably thinking, a triangle? Meg, are you making another cat? I'm not making a cat. So when you've got a nice, smooth pancake, bigger than the shape you want, you've got a nice, smooth pancake, Take a toothpick and cut the shape you want. So I just want a simple triangle, kind of a big one. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second. So I use this like a little cutter and I slid it through and cut those edges off. And I'm going to slide it through the back and cut the edges off. And there's my triangle. Is it perfect? No. Can I keep shaping it? Of course. I'm gonna shape the triangle how I want it. 
And I really like how you can kind of use your fingers, push them together to make this triangle shape. Hands are such cool tools. Lucky we like always have them with us, huh? So a little triangle, a little triangle. I think I've got what I want. So I put the triangle on like this. Do you have an idea what I might be making? It's like a bird, starting to look like a bird. So am I done? Can I put it on like that? I bet you're saying no, because you're right. I have to scratch and attach or slip and score. So now my cutting tool is going to be my scoring tool again. Make sure my beak's going the right way. And I'm going to scratch the beak where it has to attach to the vessel. And then look at my little pot. Which side is the perfect bird face? Here it is. Find where I want that beak to go. And do some little scratches there. It's a bunch of little scratches. Can you see them? Water to make a little slip on both the vessel and on the beak. Stick the beak to my vessel. And now you can see how we can smooth it out. Smooth, smooth, smooth. The clay I use to make my beak is already a little bit firm. And if you're going to make something long, like a long skinny tail or long bunny ears, you might want to make, let it sit up just a little bit until it can kind of hold its shape. I'm going to smooth it on to my pinch pot. Get it how I want it. It's kind of a long beak. I might smush it in a little bit. Make it a little shorter. And I can squeeze the top and the bottom too. So now that little beak should be able to stay on when I fire it. Pretty fun, huh? Is a beak enough to make a bird? I don't know. I think it probably needs something else. I made some wings. I did the same thing. I pushed out a little pancake with my hands and then I used my toothpick to cut the wing shape. So I could put these cute little wings on the side of my bird too. But I know what you're saying, Megan, don't forget, scratch and attach. So I'll get to the inside of my wings, put lots and lots of scratches on them, go horizontal and vertical, side to side, top to bottom. Side to side, horizontal, top to bottom, vertical. Figure out where I want the wings on my bird. Should I feel nervous? What if I don't get it exactly even? I don't know if birds really hold their wings exactly even all the time, so I think it's okay if it's not quite exactly the same. Like I said, I am not a machine, I'm just human, right? So. It's nice that my little bird vessel is going to show that it was made by a person. Scratches, scratches. Next up is the slip. A little bit of water to help it attach. Both pieces want that little bit of water. We can stick those wings on and start to smooth them and shape them onto the little bird. So I'm kind of just making sure that I can't see that corner, that hard seam or edge. I want it to be nice and strongly attached so that even if my cat bumps into it, it won't come off. Maybe use your little sponge to get in there in the corner with just a little bit of water on your sponge. If you notice, I told you to gather all these tools, but for the most part, I am using my hands for all of this. So really, as long as you have hands that aren't too tired and clay to work with, you can be sculpting, making really fun, functional art objects. So I'm smoothing and smoothing and smoothing. Get that little bird wing all stuck on. And I can do the same. Oh, I need maybe a little more water. It dried out a little bit while I was working. I can eyeball it to make sure it's about even. It's turning into a little bird. It really is, guys. 
Are you excited? I am. I like little birds. There's a nest outside the window over there. Little birds have been stopping by to see what I'm doing today. They've been taking care of their new babies. All right, getting that wing stuck on. I sometimes like to really fiddle with my clay, keep working it and working it. And if you're like me, that's all right. It's a good way to pass the time. I'll even work on things while I'm on the telephone or watching TV, just to have something for my hands to do. All right, a couple little wings, smooth that out there. All right, so we've got the shape of a bird. But how does this bird feel? Or how does it see? Probably at least, at least needs some eyes. So again, handy little toothpick. Maybe use your fingernail. You could probably use a twig. And I'm going to decide where I want my bird's eyes. And kind of lightly draw them in. I want this bird to be sleeping or resting, just thinking about springtime and collecting seeds, relaxing. If I don't get my eyes exactly how I want them, I can easily just smooth it back out with my finger and try again. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just kind of go for it. And I'm gonna keep the eyes super simple. Just barely little slits of eyes. I might make them a little bit bigger, but for right now, I kind of like it like that. And so sometimes the clay will kind of ball up and you can just brush that away and you can smooth it with your fingers. It's not that hard. You can see I have another supply today too. I have a takeout Chinese chopstick. And I want to use that to make some little feather marks on the edge of the wings. This chopstick's super cool because it has this pointy end and then it has this more squared off end and there's rounded sides and flat sides. So I can get a lot of different textures using this little chopstick. In fact, I'm gonna try something with those eyes. I made those sleeping eyes, right? I think I'm gonna smooth them away. Sorry, birdie. I want you to open your eyes, wake up. You know, a wake bird. So I'm smoothing those little eyes away and I'm not using anything except for my thumb. Being pretty gentle because this clay isn't all the way dry. I don't wanna break it. I'm just smoothing out those eyes that I made. And I'm gonna take this end, the little rounded end, and I'm going to lightly push it in and kind of turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. And I'm gonna go straight across Put it in and turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Now my bird's awake. That was so simple. Some simple eyes just from using the chopstick. Make sure you don't go all the way through if you do something like that. I didn't, but I did kind of push some clay out. And now I'm going to add some texture just on the edge of the wings. So I'm going to take, let's try this end. And I'm going to make a little imprint along the edge of my wing to show the little wing feathers at the back. So all I did was lightly push the chopstick in and I got that little wing indentation. So there's one, two, three, four. Come over here and I'll do one, two, three, four again. Does it matter if they're not perfect? No. Nope. Do you think birds always hold their wings the same way? I don't think so. So now there's little wings on both sides. So my little bird and my little cat can be friends and maybe I can put my tiny plants inside. I'm still probably going to do some more smoothing of this little bird. And then I'm going to let my little bird sit on my shelf until I can go to the ceramic studio again and put it in the kiln. So then I'll be able to bisque fire it first and I'll glaze it, maybe blue and put it in the glaze fire and I will have a functional anamorphic vessel. And when I look at it, I can think of Mott Welch and her cool snake effigy jar at my favorite place in the world, the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Now, do you have to make a snake vessel or a cat or a bird? No way, you can make whatever you want. This is your functional art. This is your anamorphic vessel. 
So if you want to make a dragon or a dinosaur or a spider, it's up to you. You can make what you want. And I hope you find a way to share your work with people you care about and that you enjoy having a beautiful piece of functional art in your life every day. I really appreciate you being here with me. I'm really proud of you for following along with these videos and making something. And I hope to see you again soon at the museum or anywhere. Thanks. Bye.